Hello friends, this is Growl. In this video, I'm going to go over this week's Apexes in Mythic Plus, along with some tips for adjusting, as well as a heads up on some of the difficult situations coming your way. This week is Tyrannical Bursting Skittish. The Tyrannical Apex is much worse than Fortified in terms of timing the dungeon, and also can get a little boring on boss fights that take 4 or 5 minutes. Generally, it's not a good idea to be pushing high keys on Tyrannical. However, the Bursting Skittish combination is the best Tyrannical week on the calendar, so it's still likely that we'll see some reasonably high keys this week and it can be a good week to push score. During the Tyrannical week, it's a good idea to prioritize healing power in difficult boss encounter dungeons and single target damage in dungeons with reasonably easy bosses. Bursting is an affix that can be easy or hard depending on how your team manages it. In general for bursting, I like to pack a little more healing than I otherwise normally would since I'm going to be spending more time healing. Be sure to watch the health of mobs carefully, and when you see mobs close to dying, you need to start setting up your healing. My default setup is Eflow on the ground, then Life Bloom on myself, and Rejuve on everyone in the party. As soon as the bursting starts, I use Wild Growth and begin using regrowths on party members I see who don't have strong defensives available. Swift Mend and Health Potion is a last resort. And remember, Bark Skin is a 1 minute cooldown so you can be using it on almost every pack for bursting. Tranquility is also a strong option, however it won't always be available. For minor essences, I like to run Conflict for the versatility buff and Well for storing up overhealing as I'm ramping and then putting it into players who are dropping low for bursting. Then you need to select one for the corruption resistance, which I usually choose formless minor. If you're really struggling in pugs with bursting, you can try Ever Rising Tide Major, pressing it right before your ramp so that you get the healing boost for bursting. However, this is a big damage loss and will slow down your boss fights not having Crucible. The Azerite trait, Vampiric Speed, gives you health after you kill mobs, and it's nice to have for bursting, as well as any extra leech or avoidance you can get without losing much. Although I generally don't recommend some of the weaker druid healing traits, like Lively Spirit or Rampant Growth, you may want to swap to these instead of running pure damage traits to help with your ability to heal bosses. Skittish is an affix that hardly affects healers, since we rarely pull threat anyways, and you generally can't save people once they pull threat. The best thing you can do is always be watching your team closely, and if your DPS gets aggro, use Typhoon or Vortex so that they can run away safely while your tank regains threat. Although I generally don't run Twilight Devastation anyway, I think it's a big mistake this week, since proccing immediately in a pack will result in a skittish nightmare. Now let's look over some dungeons. I'm just going to go over each one briefly so that you have an idea of what you're getting yourself into when you step into a high key this week. Ataldazar isn't too rough on Tyrannical other than Volkal. Make sure you go into that fight with full mana, ideally with Innervate and the Mott Trinket available and use them wisely. Even though the damage isn't spiky, be pressing Bark Skin and Iron Bark on cooldown to help conserve mana. The other big challenge is the Sword Packs. The Swords have extremely low health, and often you are pulling more than one at a time and will result in high bursting stacks. I recommend not DPSing these packs as a healer aside from maybe one spell, and go immediately into ramping and preparing for a big bursting. Be sure to prioritize the tank heavily in these, because if the tank dies to bursting, the leftover birds will start running through your team. I generally run my default essence setup of Crucible Major with Formless, Well, and Conflict here. Freehold isn't actually too bad as long as you can get past the first boss, since there's no Eudora in the council this week. I recommend committing Lust to the first phase to get out quickly. And remember, you can spam heal in the first couple packs to fill up your well to give yourself a little bit of a buffer in this fight. If you're really worried about Crag, you can run the Prosperity Talent and even Soul of the Forest. However, I generally find Scenarian Ward better for the rest of the dungeon. I generally run my default essence setup in here with Crucible Major and Formless Well and Conflict Minor. King's Rest is all about healing the bosses. 
So you want to be building entirely around healing them. Very heavy single target healing helps you with almost every boss. Be sure to conserve mana in all these fights because they're going to last a super long time. The axe boss in council is especially nasty. And it's going to be virtually unhealable in high keys. So it's a good idea to just commit lust there and even plan on using battle reses if people get affected by the axe that don't have immunities. Remember, the Shadow of Fear adds in the first couple rooms also apply Bursting Stacks, so don't get caught off guard by those. If you're looking for more single target healing, you could try Vitality Conduit Major. However, losing Crucible does slow down your damage in the dungeon, so I try and avoid it whenever possible. Some healers like to run Prosperity with Soul of the Forest for extreme amounts of burst healing. And since there, since there isn't as much group healing in this dungeon, I think it's a fine choice. I prefer to use Crucible Major with Well, Conflict, and Spirit of Preservation Minor. Shrine of the Storm doesn't have a very large healing requirement, so I like to prioritize a bit more for damage in this dungeon, because the bosses can take a very long time. The only super challenging area for bursting is the Initiates before the second boss room. Fleeing mobs with bursting cause a problem because it's much harder to kill them evenly. Use Vortex to keep them together, and plan on doing a ton of healing once you see these get pulled. I prefer my default essence and talent build in this dungeon. Siege is an incredibly frustrating dungeon this week. Footman packs can cause a problem with bursting, so just like the initiates in Shrine, be sure you are busy healing for all of them and use Vortex on fleeing mobs. Tyrannical Siege is especially brutal because all of the bosses are phase based, so you want as much single target damage as you can. Honestly, I just wouldn't expect to time a good siege key this week. You should just come back later. Temple can be quite good this week, assuming you can live the bosses. I would build for as much healing power as possible here, since you don't lose too much time because it saves you time on the last boss. I like to run Formless Major in this dungeon, so that I can steal Lucid Dreams from a party member during the boss fights for mana, and then just beam on trash when I don't need it. If you don't have Lucid available, you should just be taking it yourself. Conserve your mana carefully on each boss, as they're going to drag out way longer than you're used to. Make sure you have Potions of Replenishment and Coastal Mana Potions available. If you're really struggling with mana here, you can run the Abundance Talent for more powerful and cheaper regrowths. My preferred essence build is Formless Major with ERT, Conflict, and Well Miners. Motherload is one of the easier dungeons this week, as long as you can deal with bursting in the first half of the dungeon. The biggest culprits of this are the off-duty laborers, which have less than a third of the health of normal mobs and often come in large packs. Whenever you see your tank pull these, you should be getting ready to prepare prepare for bursting immediately. The third boss can be a bit of a challenge on Tyrannical, so be sure to have anyone you can't dispel be using a defensive cooldown. Remember that Rixa always targets the two closest players with the damage over time effect, so you can actually bait these by having the people that you want them on stand closer. I almost always run my default essence setup in here. Underrot will, all, will be all about living Kragma's room. Bursting is especially dangerous here because when combined with the Blood Swarmers, they can easily one-shot a party member if they're being fixated while bursting is going off. It's a good idea to ask for a DPS stun or a slow on the Blood Swarmers while the bursting is happening, since you're very likely healing instead of controlling it yourself. For Kragma, you want very specific rotations of when people are using their abilities in order to live each tantrum because they're going to be lethal without a bunch of help. If you're really worried about tantrum, you can run Ever Rising Tide Major for the additional burst healing. However, again, you lose damage when you run this build. Otherwise, I'll just run my normal essence setup in here. Toldegore, like many other dungeons this week, is fairly easy to time if you can live the bosses. The bursting can be a problem if you're pulling really big, however, generally just playing conservative and focusing on healing is enough to handle it. As a druid, 
once you have the third boss dead, you can actually use the dream walk ability to leave the instance and switch your talent, item, or essence setup to help deal with the last boss if you have enough time, which is usually recommended on Tyrannical. If I have the option, I usually switch to ERT Major along with the Elk Stone Trinket for better potions, versatility, and burst healing for doubles, along with Guardian Affinity since I don't need much damage from there on out. Otherwise, I'm no running my normal talent setup with Formless Major, ERT, Conflict, and Well Miners. On high keys, it is likely you'll need to run Wild Charge in here to dodge the upheaval from the first boss or else you'll just get killed in one hit. Waycrest is a very high healing requirement dungeon, so I'm going to bring as much healing in here as possible. I'm forgoing my normal essence setup to build for increased healing. Any leech or avoidance you have will especially shine in this dungeon since you'll be taking a lot of damage as well. The Sisters and Lord and Lady Waycrest are immense healing checks, and bursting and maggots make a lot of the trash pulls really difficult too. Remember, since it's not fortified, your tank is likely going to be pulling quite big in Rawl's area to make up for time, so there will be big bursting stacks that you need to get ready to heal. The dogs in the courtyard can also be a problem with bursting as well. Well is incredible in this dungeon, so be sure to be constantly tracking it and spamming overhealing during downtime to fill it up. My essence setup here is ERT Major with Well conflict and preservation minor similar to waycrest i run a full healing setup in junkyard as well this is because of the shock bots making damage far less important so i'm only focusing on bosses when developing my strategy in this dungeon since most of the trash pulls are fairly easy if you feel that you can't meet the healing checks of hard-hitting abilities like gobamax rumble or the Tank Buster's Fulminating Zap, you could run ERT Major. Another alternative, or my preference, would be Formless Major, or Lucid if you don't have something to steal available, which will do less healing power, but make you much more mana efficient. Since this dungeon is new this season, I don't have a ton of experience healing high tyrannical keys, but I think Formless or Lucid would be the best choice. I also generally run Guardian Affinity in this dungeon, since damage does not matter given the shock bots. So I recommend spending most of your time just padding heals, filling up your well, and keeping your team safe so that they can keep your bots, even if it doesn't seem like it's too dangerous of a situation. My essence setup would be Formless Major with ERT, Conflict, and Well Miners. Last we have Workshop. If you haven't figured out the pattern yet, this is going to be all about surviving the bosses. On high keys, it's absolutely mandatory that you use the hammer stacking strategy to kill the first boss, since living more than two vent jets will be nearly impossible. In Unorganized Pugs, asks that everyone use their defensives and immunities early, that way you can save your trank for later and health potions and health stones as a last resort at the end. Be sure to be mindful of your placement during this boss so you don't have to be moving during the vent jets, either because of the saws or if you're too close to the jets. The last boss will definitely, definitely be a hard wall with its insane fight length and high healing and mana requirement. In general, I don't think doing high workshops on Tyrannical is a good idea. You should probably just come back on a fortified week. If I really had to, I would be running Formless or Lucid Major in here with ERT, Conflict, and Well Miners. That does it for this week. Thanks for watching. This is a new video idea that I thought would be useful to healers out there getting into Mythic Plus, so let me know what you thought of it in the comments and if you think I should continue doing it or any changes for future weeks. Happy keying!